come back from North of Malindi. We had a really successful time catching the crabs with Peter and Jacob. This has been a massive find for us because I didn't know we got these crabs. I still don't actually know what it's called. I'm going to call it a blue swimmer crab. Did uh, pull one apart back there and had a taste of the meat. It's very, very delicate, very sweet. So what I thought we'd do is make a duet of crab using prime sort of meat from in here with the mud crab's legs. And the meat in here is really, really good. So the first thing really is just to prep the crab. It's very similar to the way we do the mud crabs. We just open the carapace up here, take the, t uh, the head off. Uh, we'll take the claw off here. This will be nicely cleaned, we'll open up, and we're just gonna steam it. Now, the, the dish is sort of gonna be a little, is, is Asian inspired, a bit, a bit of a play on ginger crab. Very, very simple. Okay, so um, this over here is my steamer. This trusted thing, believe it or not, has been in the restaurant with me for quite a while. It belonged to my grandfather. It was a tandoor. I don't know if you know what that is. It's like an oven. It's an Indian way of cooking. I've turned it into a steamer, and uh, over the years, we've broken the handle off. So not the most efficient piece of kit. So we're just gonna steam the crab legs to start off with. Crab legs in, crab. We'll uh, clean our blue swimmer crab here. And what we're after with this fella is all this meat in the body. But the legs on a mud crab are much bigger than one of these fellas. So we're not really gonna use these legs for much, to be honest with you. We're just gonna steam this body meat and pick all that body meat out. The mud crab legs will steam quicker than the rest of the crab. So I'll just show you how we're gonna prepare those. See in the restaurant, people just tossing these away. If you're eating mud crab, get involved. Because there is so much good meat in these legs and there's one, two, three, four, I don't know, lots. Very simple. We actually only use what you, I guess you could call the thigh, this top portion here. Snip that off there with a pair of scissors. Cut up and down the length of the... It's finicky, but it's worth it. Remove the shell. That's what you offer, that, that, that lovely bit of thigh meat. So we'll do that with all of them and then we'll pick all the meat out of our blue swim. It. Our blue swim is now nice and steamed and the meat is plump and perfectly cooked and you can see it's turned into a maroon swim crab. I've got all this leg meat out of uh, the thighs of our mud crab. I want to add texture to the dish. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit Asian inspired. So I've got some Szechuan pepper here and I just want to lightly just dust these, not overly so, in Szechuan pepper. I'm now going to coat them in, this is white maize flour, commonly used in Kenya, it's called ugali. Pretty much the staple food of Kenya. And it's very similar to polenta. So what I'm gonna do is dust each one of my crab thighs in polenta, just lightly, or ugali, whatever you wanna call it. Remember, they're steamed, so they are, they are cooked. When we're ready to go, they'll be dropped in the fryer like 20 seconds before we serve the dish, and Bob's your uncle. So Sammy's picked all the crab meat from this blue swimmer crab, and you can see, I mean, the texture's really like soft and delicate. So we wanna treat it with care. You know? Good job, Sammy. Man of many words. So this is some ginger, which has been very finely julienned. So we're gonna do two things with this. A little bit of the ginger is gonna go into the dish as we're cooking it, and then we're gonna deep fry the rest of the ginger. Deep fried ginger sort of caramelizes and has a really nice flavor. Crunchy and it's just delicious. And that'll be a little bit of a garnish on the top of the, of the crab. I guess the final component of the dish is just a Yorkshire pudding. Sam is a Yorkshire pudding expert. Where did you learn how to make Yorkshire puddings? In Yorkshire. You worked in Yorkshire, didn't you? Yes. Sir. And learned how to make original Yorkshire puddings. So he's made some fantastic Yorkshire puddings here for me. The Yorkshire puddings are a super simple thing to make. It's, what is it, Sam? <coughs> Eggs, wheat flour, oil. Eggs, wheat flour, oil, milk, seasoning. seasoning. A savory pancake batter, which is then stuck in the oven and roasted. And they're gonna go underneath the dish to soak up all the juices and just provide another texture, another level to the dish for the crab. Okay, so to put the dish together, simply green onions, ginger, Butter, fish stock, that's it. So we'll start with the butter. Quite a healthy amount, a little bit browned. A good amount of scallions, I reckon I've got one, two, and a pinch of julienne ginger. So we'll take that off, and put a little black pepper into there. Now we're ready to throw our crab meat in. Now you've got to be really quick with this, because again, this is cooked. If you overcook it in here, you, you, you've destroyed the entire thing. So you've got your crab meat, Deglaze it with a touch of fish stock, and we're done. So we're just gonna set that crab aside now. The final thing that I wanna do here is just separate a little of the sauce out of that crab. Very gently press it. You must be really gentle with this. You don't wanna turn the crab into mashed crab. I've got my uh, fried crab size, my deep fried ginger. Sauce up. Yeah, so we're ready to start plating. The 
We'll start with the yolks, putting on the bottom of the plate. Lovely crab meat on top. Ginger on the top. Fried crab size around the edge. I don't want to lie them down in the sauce because you lose all that texture. There we go. Jewet of ginger crab. Ingomeni jewet of ginger crab. Really, really simple but delicious.